lot of colored pigments. I have a whole bunch out here. If you go to Newburg Ebel, you'll find tons of powdered pigments that you can use. Um, uh, here's the deal is that, um, you know, somebody can show you how to use these for a specific fish, but if you pick up a, a fish and, it's, and you've got your reference photo, and then you find a color that doesn't match, you gotta go out and look for the color that's gonna create that, or you're gonna have to use a combination of colors and layer them to get that particular hue or that particular depth of color that you want. My base coat's on, and my steel wooling, my little antiquing that I go through the process to uh, uh, get the uh, scales and everything to, uh, to really stand out. And then I've taken my watercolor pencils and put on here to get a base layer of color before I do any kind of airbrushing or scale tipping. They're called pan pastels. And uh, you have, uh, these are all just layered. You know, I can take these off and I get another color. So I keep all my blues and, and keep the depth of those. Uh, so I can find a color that I want. Here's a darker one. And then also have a, a Payne's gray. There's a lot of those in your greens and your reds, you know, for that facial part. These are like, Amazing, um, and uh, again, I'm, I am learning. Uh, I mean, these are great materials to have, and this is our, uh, des definitely this has to be in place before you uh, can get any result. But also using the right brushes and the right technique to get them on there, and that's what I'm just experimenting with all the time. And uh, I'll finish this fish, and and you know it'll, it'll be okay, but I won't be super satisfied with it. I'll say, ah, I could have done that better, or done this, and then uh, I'll grab my my pie plate out there and start experimenting again and try to say well how come that didn't come out right and try a different color until I reach that color that I want and then I got to take notes and make sure that that's written down uh, in, under you know you should have notes and in a file I keep folders with all of my organized with all of the pictures of specific fish and the time of year they were a lot taken. of the tips that I have um, I have learned from from Rick Crane and uh, I just I think he is um, just a master at getting these things put together. You, you have to realize that there is a ton, a ton of good taxidermists out there, good fish taxidermists, and um, and they all do things a little bit different. But I really like Rick's technique. Um, it's a real hands-on approach to fish. It's not just taking an airbrush and and throwing throwing paint on there. And I think that's where I had my problems in my earlier years. And 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 for uh, for mass production fish, I mean, I, I did 18 foot great whites, 15 foot marlin, lots of uh, hammerhead sharks. I mean, I was <laughs> it was like running a boat shop. We had so many fish going out back in the day, um, and using the large airbrushes, you know. But I didn't have uh, I didn't have the techniques and the know-how to do um, I think near good a job. And I, I gave it up partly because of the danger of the chemicals and the paint that I was breathing. But um, but uh, I wouldn't um, um, I went back to it when I came across uh, Rick's. Um, DVDs, and I think I have one up here, for example, here's one that I, I have out as I'm going over the steelhead because I'm looking at a couple of things that he's using and, uh, you know, I'm giving him a little plug here, <laughs> he may not know that, but uh, just uh, realizing that if you're starting out, these are great ways to begin, finding somebody who does these, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be Rick, but there's other guys out there that do this. Um, Rick, uh, the system I use uh, and have been then adding uh, other things too and trying and experimenting um, started here okay so um, but you can you can get him online I think it's anglersartistry.com and uh, he's got a lot of stuff there and I I know that Rick would help you himself too and uh, he would gladly share his um, approach and many of you probably even know him uh, if you've been to uh, the competition the river steelhead and I've been putting doing some scale tipping on this um, and I'm putting the golds up here, and it's it's still far from the color that I'm looking for, but this is gonna be still, so I had all of my canvas layer colors put on here first, and then I'm going to, then I go and put uh, the scale tipping on here, and you got your silvers and gold and down here, and putting some of these steel gray tipping in this area, and I'm still working on this, um, some of this yellow ochre, that, I haven't gotten to this head yet, but uh, some yellow ochre that's gonna go in a couple places down here. Um, there's also some pretty cool colors if you're really trying to like a this one here is a winter run steelhead and it's going to be fairly dark once I get um, the statuary bronze and things down in here to darken these areas. So I've got a quick sealer coat on it with what we had now creating that tear line. Um, 
model look going on there. You can see some of the scale tipping showing up and uh, now we're going to go on and do a little more work on the head and we're going to then I think take care of that center stripe and come back to the head a little bit more and then work that bottom portion of the belly. The side has uh, the first amount of red that's been uh, put in there. This is actually several layers of, of powdered paints that have been um, Draw the lines and artificially put them back in to give the illusion that the scales are there and then paint each of these back in by hand on that belly. And then I'm going to go over this with a darker color to tone this down since this is a winter phase steelhead. I'm try to pick up some of that gray black inside the mouth using 